Hey folks, it's probably going to be my last post of the day. Um, yeah, basically I've been talking about Zapper and Beefheart, so I thought I would show you the items I have from the Bizarre and Straight labels, other than Zapper. Um, basically, he and Herbie Cohen started up the Bizarre and Straight labels in 19, well, 1968, really. Um, Straight was meant to be focused more on different artists, whereas Bizarre would have been, well, originally Bizarre would have been for the Stranger stuff, hence the name. Straight would have been for the more straight stuff, but it turned out Bizarre was mainly just for Zappa, Straight was more for the other artists. Um, a lot of these albums are very rare, they are the prize of my collection. Well, I've got quite a few, but they are a big part of my collection. Um, it's, it's taken me a long time to get all these, as if you've been watching my older videos, you know I got to Zappa quite a young age, so I got some of these at a young age when they weren't as rare. Whereas now they're very hard to find, especially the English pressings and especially in the condition they're in. Okay, I've done them in chronological order too. There's only one I don't have. I'll tell you what one that is when we get there. So the first one that was released on Bizarre was Lenny Bruce's Berkeley Concert. This is the English pressing on Transatlantic. Same on the back. Cal Schenkel's sleeve as well. Lovely Transatlantic label. They also released Uncle Meat over here um, because Reprise refused to, who were distributed by Pi at the time, they refused to handle it. Um, this and Uncle Meat, because obviously this was full of swear words and Uncle Meat has got a few on there too. This is a great record actually, quite disturbing image of Lenny Bruce frying what appears to be a plastic dog turd, I hope it's plastic. Um, I love the fact that it says editing absolutely none. Zappa and Herb Cohen, I think, oversaw the, the album and everything. That's how this came about. And this was recorded during the time that the Mothers were on tour with him, I think. Well, they did a gig with him around this time. This was one of his last gigs as well. And it is good. There's that. Next up, probably the, the strangest of all the releases. An Evening with Wild Man Fisher. A tear on the sleeve, which has been bugging me since I got it, but I had to have it. Apart from that, it's a really nice copy. This is the rarer English pressing on reprise. Like I say, originally they wouldn't handle it because Pi wouldn't would distribute in them. I think they came to some sort of agreement because on most reprise albums you'll notice that well basically that black bar there, that normally says distributed by Pi. They obviously just didn't want their name on it. Although I think this looks more like it was done by CBS being proper geeky here, looking at the pressings, as were the straight releases, so it could have been something to do with that. Anyway, interesting album, not to everyone's tastes, he's now no longer with us. I like it myself. I, I got it originally, obviously, because I was going Zappa crazy and wanted anything that Zappa had laid his hands on from this period. Um, a great photo of the mothers with Wild Man Fisher on the back there. Again, this has never been reissued. I doubt it will, as Gail owns the rights and they had a big falling out with Wild Man Fisher because he threw something at Moon Unit. He actually was a paranoid schizophrenic. A lot of you probably know the story. There's a great documentary on him called Deal Railroaded. If you can get it on DVD, I'd get it. Very sad though, I cried when I first saw it. But hey, that's me, I'm emotional. Okay, they're the only releases on Bizarre that um, weren't Zappa himself. We're on to the straight label now. First release on straight was by Alice Cooper. Don't know if you all knew that. This is a superb album in my opinion. Forget Alice from the Seven is this is the real thing. This is psychedelic as hell. Crazy band. You can tell they were into Zappa. And this is as rare as they come. An English pressing is is very rare. I haven't found one since, and it's not the best copy. So if anyone happens to have a spare, nice English pressing, I would be very interested. Great album. And this sold next to nothing. Um, just really out there. I think this has now been reissued. I think you can pick it up. I'd recommend it. Even if you don't like Alice Cooper's 70s stuff. If you like Crazy Psych, you'll like this. Again, more Crazy Psych stuff. Judy Hensk and Jerry Esther. Second release on the straight label. It's an English pressing, again, very rare, the only one I've ever seen. I picked this up about 10 years ago in a record fair for £10. 
yeah, you wouldn't find that now. It's a really interesting album. Julie Hensk was an American folk blues singer. Jerry Esther was, I think he was a producer, he was involved with Love and Spoonful and also produced some of Tim Buckley's stuff. Um, he, she does all the singing and boy can she sing. Really good psychedelic stuff. Bits of folk in there, bits of blues, crazy early synthesizer shit going on. Highly recommended. And again, this has been reissued, so you can get this quite easily. I've already covered Beef Heart in my other video. I'll just sort of show it. There's a third release on Straight Trout My Scriptica. I'll talk more about that album on the Beef Heart video. Next up, this is the hardest one it was for me to find. This is in a plastic sleeve here. This is by Jeff Simmons who is also playing in the background. Jeff Simmons was... <laughs> Jeff Simmons was basically a member of the Mothers, but he started off on the straight label. And this was a soundtrack he did for a film about Hells Angels. This was only released in the States. This was never pressed in England. This is rare as hell over here. And it is a fucking good album. It's dirty and funky. A lot of it's instrumental. I think Jeff's playing nearly everything on it, apart from the drums really heavy stuff. Interestingly, if there's any Tapper fans out there who went to the Roundhouse Festival in London in uh, November 2010, Jeff was there. Really cool guy. Um, cut a long story short, um, me and my girlfriend were let down by someone who was going to get us tickets at the last minute. We thought we'll go there anyway, try and get in. It was my friend Simon too, a very good friend of mine. We thought we'll try and get in. We couldn't get in, of course. But Jeff was there he was uh, performing there and he was just hanging around and he came up and spoke to me. I was wearing a t-shirt with the Freak Out album cover on it and he just started talking to us and I couldn't believe it and I said, my god, you're Jeff Simmons, I love your albums and I think he was quite taken aback by that and because of that he got us in for the whole weekend, free pass, it was insane. He's a great guy, still chat to him now, he lives in Seattle. Um, he's working on a lot of stuff at the moment too probably shouldn't tell you too much about what he's working on but um, he's very talented this was the next release which is also by Jeff Lucilla's Messed My Mind Up this album's now playing in the background and this is a lost classic really good psych album this is the very rare English pressing unfortunately I never got Jeff to sign this because quite funny about taking my records out with me unless I'm DJing which I don't really do much now but this is a really good album, and again, this is both these albums are now on CD, I think. I don't think they've done vinyl reissues. Again, lovely original straight pressing. God, I really need to sort this camera out. I got excited. I've got the camera in the post today. Um, I haven't messed around with the settings at all. I don't even know how. I'm quite bad with technology. So yeah, that I would recommend that to anyone if you haven't already heard it. Zappa's playing guitar on it. He produced it. It's credited under the name Lamar Brewster, and of course it has Lucilla's Mess My Mind Up, which later appeared on Joe's Garage. Garage, shall I say. Awesome album, from start to finish, and Ian Underwood's on it too. Um, release number seven. I was just thinking then, because one of the in the numbering system, one of the releases never came out. Don't know what it was meant to be. This is an unusual one. I think this was to do with Herbie Cohen more than Zappa. Tim Dore who is a sort of folky singer-songwriter, Penrod. It's actually a good album. Um, I bought it originally just because I wanted everything on the label. Um, if, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't still have it. It is a nice album. And it's an English pressing. Again, these, are, these were quite easy to find a few years back, but now these have got quite hard. I'm not sure if this has been reissued, but if you can find it, check it out. It's a nice sort of psyche, there's a really good trippy psych track on here called Junkie John, funky bass line, slow as hell, crazy synth stuff going on in there, it's eerie as hell and it is a fucking good track, nice slow sort of stoned stuff, it's very, yeah, it's very sort of stoner folky stuff with a bit of psych thrown in, good album. Next up, another, another of the odd ones in the canon, the GTO's Permanent Damage album. This is the English pressing, which never came with the booklet. I've never even seen the booklet or the American pressing. This is one of the rarest albums on the straight label, especially as an English pressing, because nobody bought it. 
And of course, that is Pamela Debar there from the, I shouldn't say groupie, but I'm with the band fame. She was beautiful, wasn't she? Um, yeah, great bunch of girls. <laughs> Very interesting. The album was actually produced by Lowell George, and I think there's no credit for him on it, but um, yeah, Lowell George was involved in it. Rod Stewart's doing a bit of vocals, Jeff Beck's playing all the guitar pretty much on it. The mothers are on there, Zappa's in there doing bits and bobs. Um, they can't sing, but the songs are pretty good. And the music's good. Um, there's a song about Captain Beefheart on there that's quite interesting. Again, UK pressing. This, I don't think there's a reissue of this. It was on CD very briefly in the late 80s, but you can't get it now. You're going to spend a lot of money finding this. Like I say, I bought this years ago and it was, I think it was £20, but now you've got to pay at least £100 now for a nice English person. Unless you're very lucky. That's that. Next up, one of my favourite singers ever, Tim Buckley. This is Blue Afternoon. Um, Interestingly, his two albums on straight are my two favourite Tim Buckley albums, and not just because they're on straight. Blue Afternoon is probably my favourite. It's got Happy Time on it, which my band regularly cover. Um, it's just a great album. Uh, Tim Buckley was just phenomenal. I mean, this is his more jazzy stuff. English pressing, very rare. Didn't sell, of course. It's been reissued, but is now out of print again. I think you can get a vinyl of it. Again, he left us way too early. Very sad. Very good. Next up, probably another one of the. This is pretty, in my opinion, the rarest of the straight releases, the English ones anyway. Easy Action by Alice Cooper, which sold even less than the first album and is a bit more advanced. Still pretty out there stuff. A lot of experimentation, a lot of psych. Look like a bunch of girls there, don't they? I think that's why they did that. Um, you can tell that's him, but. He does sure look young. <laughs> this is another great album. I'd highly recommend this. Again, UK straight. Can't beat these pressings. CBS. Another unusual one, which I I never listened to, but it's nice to have. It's a nice album. I just don't listen to it. Persuasions, a cappella. Pretty much says what it is. It's all a cappella doo-wop singing. And I always thought this was to do with Zappa, but I think it was a Herbie Cohen signing. It's an interesting album. The first half's live, the second half's in the studio. Although I think Zappa did have something to do with them. Again, a UK straight pressing, and I've never seen another one come up for sale, so I don't even know how rare these are. It might not be worth anything. I don't know, but nice album. Again, I've already covered Beef Heart, that's Lick My Decals. Check out the Beef Heart video, another UK straight pressing. No lyric insert, they only came with the American ones. One of the most adventurous albums ever released, ever by anyone, ever maybe. <laughs> Star Sailor by Tim Buckley. If you know the band Star Sailor, it's nothing like them. <laughs> um, it is just freeform jazz with vocals, crazy vocals. I'm not just talking Tim Buckley's amazing vocals. He yodels, he hollers, he whoops, he yells, it's everything. UK pressing, very rare took me a long time to find this. I got this from uh, Barry Winton, also known as Barry Vertigo, a um, pretty well-known record dealer and collector in London, called Barry Vertigo because he's crazy about the Vertigo label. He's quite eccentric, he's been around since the 70s. But yeah, this is where I got this from, this guy. I don't know if it was his personal copy, but it is in really good nick. And last but not least, I think we're going to run out of time soon. Did you know Love It To Death by Alice Cooper was also on straight? Uh, obviously, when this was reissued, 18 was quite a big hit. Um, this uh, this is just great. And this is more the identifiable Alice Cooper sound, really. And this is also... All, all the Alice Cooper albums are rare on straight, especially the UK pressings. And... There were, you know, some people say this is rarer than Easy Action, the UK straight, but I'd say Easy Action is still rarer. I've found a few of these. I had a, I had an older copy of this years ago, which was pretty wrecked, and I picked this one up a few years ago. Still, it's got that sticker mark. It's not a tear. It's just you can't even feel it. Could colour it in really, but that's cheating, isn't it? 
Unfortunately, I have completely forgot to dig out my straight singles. I've only got two. I've got Tim Buckley's Happy Time UK pressing with the company sleeve, which is gorgeous. And um, I have the Alice Cooper 18 single on straight two, both English pressings. But as I said before, my singles are all over there somewhere and they are not alphabetical. But maybe I shall do another video soon. Keep commenting, guys. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for checking it out.